We're very appreciative this evening of your attendance and the attendance of uh, the esteemed speakers this evening for what will be a very unique evening talking about the vision for the Green Investment Bank 2020. So just to give you a few examples of the kind of projects which are quite illustrative. For example, I was asked to open a uh, anaerobic digestion plant in April in Dagenham. The uh, offshore wind farming at westernmost Rough, Birmingham Biopower, another very big, in this case, 47 million waste project, and it's made a 12 million investment without which the project would not have happened. We've now committed uh, 1.6 billion of our own money that sits alongside 3.6 billion, so we've gone through that 5 billion of total projects moved forward. And we've invested that throughout the UK in big projects and small projects from 2 million up to a billion pounds for offshore wind. I think there are pieces of what we do at the Green Investment Bank that different people don't agree with or don't like, but what we do have is broad political consensus of the need for a Green Investment Bank and the fact that it seems to be working. I think it's been a really good start, but we are early teenage years, so there's a lot more to do here. And if we look forward to 2020, I think the extra point I want to make about why the Green Investment Bank must be involved in a much wider, if not the totality, of the green economy is because a lot of the solutions and new technologies and indeed competitive advantage that the UK can gain is in integrated solutions. We need to have a publicly owned and controlled bank like the Green Investment Bank working with markets to leverage in private capital but being distinctly different from private capital and I think we built the consensus around that vision and we'd like to see that vision carry forward. When we look back at where we were people weren't sure whether this thing would actually work could this you know could this uh, albatross take off and could it fly and we've flown but we're at the very start we've got lots more to do. Sean I didn't wish you happy birthday <laughs> so congratulations. Um, one normally says many happy returns, and I think uh, you know, you're, you're certainly delivering many happy returns to the UK taxpayer, so congratulations on that. The, the Green Investment Bank has achieved a huge amount in its first two years, not least in the amount of external um, funding that it's leveraged, I think on a ratio of about one to three. I think the Green Investment Bank is one of the best public institutions created in the last 50 years. But I think perhaps what I'm most excited about is starting to see some of the financial innovation that the GIB has been doing, particularly around um, developing new fund structures to bring in some of the private sector investors that were looking to move into this space but didn't quite have the confidence to do that. Highly professional organisation, good team of people, politically independent and durable. The Green Investment Bank has been an excellent idea. It's brought to reality the idea that you can have an institution created in a very rapid amount of time with full government support across party lines. It's brought together uh, developers, investors and private capital into a sector which really needed it. The best achievement of the bank has been uh, to be a role model, a catalyst for the creation of other green finance institutions across the world. We've really made some progress since we started this business two years ago. We've delivered on our key objective of crowding in capital and investing our money. And we've created a business model that we think works in terms of being green and profitable. We've delivered on both of those things.